I'd like to invite the last of our speakers, Dr. Laura Lochlane, who's a fellow in the European Programme for Intervention Epidemiology Training um, and recently volunteered in uh, the Ebola response. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm very excited today to discuss a project that was initiated in January of this year in Tonkalili District for the mobilization of local people and technology in mapping for the Sierra Leone Ebola epidemic response. So this, program, or this project began in Tonkalili District, which is in central Sierra Leone, and has an estimated population of over 430,000. And the area is around 7,000 kilometers squared, and to equate that is around a little bit larger than uh, Swaziland, if that helps. So this, uh, this district is administratively divided into 11 chiefdoms and has an estimated 1,000 villages. And over 450 Ebola cases occurred in this, uh, in this district that were confirmed. And the, in December of 2014, the Ebola Management Centre was opened in Khalifa Rawala in, in a town called Magbaraka, and that was operated by um, MSF Holland. And soon after the, uh, the Ebola Management Centre opened, issues with gaps in mapping were identified. So when a patient would present at the EMC, either the patient themselves would give the details of the village or the chieftain that they came from, or if the patient wasn't conscious, then the nurse or the ambulance driver would get that information. So you're beginning to immediately have a problem because either they may not give the correct village name or there's different spelling. So we had difficulties in rapidly locating villages of Ebola cases, our contacts, because many villages had similar names or were in different chiefdoms, or villages with alternate names or different spellings, or there was missing locations of recent villages and satellite villages. So there was many, many gaps that were identified, and I think Pete showed our maps weren't as bad, but they were empty, but still there were many, visit, many villages that were missing. So this led to the project in which the aim was to improve mapping within Tonkalili District by mobilizing local people in order to obtain reliable geographical information to trace Ebola cases and their contacts. So for this project, I'll discuss some of the methods that were used, and that's in terms of mobilization of local people, some of the technology sources that we used, and also the training costs of the project ensued. So in terms of mobilizing local people, this was possible due to the availability of Okada drivers, or otherwise known as motorbike drivers, and also the fact that local people had GPS-enabled smartphones. So you can see the team here, they have their, they're waving their phones in the air. So there's many advantages of using this type of technology, and also with the locals, as they were all familiar with the district, the motorbikes are able to navigate the sometimes very difficult terrain within Tonkalili District. And also, there's no need for training for device use. These phones were self-owned. They knew how to operate the phones. The only thing that training was needed on was the software that they were going to use. And also, there was no language barrier because they were able to speak the local language. So there was huge advantages to mobilizing these locals. So in terms of the technology used, the Open Data Kit Collect software is an open source tool that can be used to create and manage mobile data collection. And then with the OpenStreetMap, Osmond, this is a map and navigation application that can be used to access high quality OpenStreetMap data. So there's major advantages to using the ODK Collect software because it's free, it's available on the Google Play software for an Android devices. And you create your survey in Excel and then it can be transferred to the web platform. And then you can then enter your data in, in the software and this is secured on a, on a server that MSF controls. So any data collected is secure. And then in terms of advantages for using Osmond, this is again free. It's available on the Android uh, Google Play. It's for Android devices. And it works both online and offline, as coverage was an issue at times, and also yeah, internet is an issue. So it's great to have these technologies available and all free and easy to use. So the information that was collected using this survey was very concise and precise, because we wanted to collect accurate information about village names, the GPS locations, the alternate or you know, complete name of the villages, as well as contact information of village chiefs or heads, and also the number of households in a village to get a population estimation idea. Also, another other information was collected in terms of healthcare access. So what type of healthcare facility was in the village, where it was located, contact information for the healthcare workers, and also the location of the nearest healthcare facility if there wasn't one present in the village itself. So to collect this information, it's very straightforward. Once you're logged on to the MSF uh, server, then you just could select a blank form, select the server that you want to carry out, fill in a blank form, begin the new survey, and then it's a very simple swipe action to go through the questionnaire to collect the information. And we kind of can give little um, 
like spelling is important, it notes to the collector, so they know to collect uh, correct information. So it's a very easy to use software, and at any point you can save the questionnaire as you're collecting the data. So this is important so you don't lose any information. Then to get more accurate GPS location estimates, you can record the, the location coordinates. They can also pinpoint favorite locations, or they can track which route they've taken using the GPX recording feature with Osmond. So in terms of training and costs, 24 local workers were hired. These are just people that Ivan found around Magbaraka. So 12 people uh, with motorbikes, or otherwise known as arcade drivers, and 12, we call them health motors because we gave them a health motor wage, but 12 local people with Android smartphones. So the training, very short, one to two hours. It was fantastic because these people knew how to use their devices. It was a matter of explaining about the software and also about how to conduct themselves in the field and how to get informed consent, these type of things, and of course their safety. So those, that was how long the training was, so it was very short. And the daily costs were also low. Motorbike drivers, uh, they got 25 euro per day on average, and the local, <coughs> local people who were, got a health promoter's wage of 10 euro per day, and that covered the rate and also the cost of phone use. So in the village, the 950 villagers were surveyed in two weeks, which is a huge accomplishment for such a small team. And um, the villages that were surveyed were within the catchment area of the EMC in Magbaraka. So each team surveyed around eight to 10 villages per day. And they collected information not only about the GPS location and the names of villages, but also contact information, population data estimates, and access to healthcare information. And the fact that they were able to collect this much information in such a short period of time, and for only three euro fifty per village, is a modest cost for such a um, huge investment in their time. So here is just some of the how this is a very simple map, not quite as uh, elaborate as the other two speakers presented, but. This information is vital. It shows you the red dots represent the number of uh, cases that occurred in a village. So we can see that the distribution throughout the Tuggly district, this allows for lots of action. You can respond quickly when you know exact location of where cases are for distribution of hygiene kits. Also, large turnover of uh, expat staff in the time that EMC was open. So this also allowed them to see the distribution of cases in the district and also to see, um, you know, also for survivor follow-up. As I said, there were over 450 cases in um, Tonkalili during the Ebola outbreak, and uh, some of them have gone to different districts to receive um, treatment. So we can map where all these cases are for survivor follow-up. So uh, this just goes in, gives an illustration of exactly how many of the villages were mapped or surveyed by the team. So it's quite an extensive and uh, quite an extensive uh, yeah, number of villages that were visited and surveyed. And then when we combine this, it's a very busy map, but when we combine this with, um, with the data that was readily available. So in green, we see this is the data that was collected by our team. And then the red, this is kind of the pre-existing data. We can see that there was a lot of information missing in Tonkalili district. And this information collected really added to that. So there were many, many advantages to mobilizing local people. And one was that it allowed a rapid implementation of a survey with low resource needs. It also gave the ability to train local people with technology on their own devices. So it instilled them with a lot of confidence. They were able to partake in this Ebola response by collecting information on their own phones. So this gave great local and community involvement. So in conclusion, this is a, for an experimental um, project. It gave a, it was a modest investment to gather large scale geographic and population data rapidly. It also gave the ability to use locally appropriate technology in genuine partnership with local people. And this could most definitely be used for future emergencies to improve response. And it's actually being used in the Central African Republic at the moment for a large malaria project. So this is very accessible information, and it's very easy to use. So I would like to thank the project team, to Ivan Gayton, who actually designed this project. And I was very intrigued and fascinated when I heard about it. So big thank you to him. And to Jorgis, Stanley, Grazia, and the local workers in Mabaraka who worked collecting this data and also all the MSF staff in Magbaraka and to Jane Greg and Costas Dennis for their help with this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. The excellent example of uh, uh, the application yeah. of technology in the field. Does anybody have any? Yes, a question straight in the front, uh, in front of me. Thank you very much for your presentation. My, my question is, um, did you have any challenge during the height of the Ebola outbreak when the government imposed um, 
restrictions and mobilities in terms of having, having your mappers go from villages to villages um, and perhaps even going into health centers when, when you know, the government have recommended no movement between villages. Thank yeah. you. So at the time, if you, if you were working with MSF, you were able to get a pass. So you were able to pass through the boundaries. So that was one major advantage. And then you tried to ensure that, yeah, going to health facilities, um, that they made sure they didn't go inside. There was lots of protection measures. But at the time, if you worked with MSF, you were able to get a pass to pass the police controls. At any time, did you think that maybe perhaps the mappers were at a bit of an increased risk uh, when they go from villages to villages? In, in general, when we even in my practice, it's a case investigator team. So they, you always make sure that they don't go inside health cities. You know the no body contact rule applies. So you know that's one of the main things with MSF is you know you don't touch somebody, then you know you're safe. So you would not put someone in a risk, in risk if you knew. But as they were given advice and training during the during the time that they had the very short training to ensure that they didn't touch anybody and go into health facilities, always kind of keep your distance. That's the general rule when you're in the field for us and for also for them. Yeah. Thank you Thank very you. much. Um, can we have the online? We've got a question from our online audience. Um, so I have a question on, from the online audience um, about mapping for drug-resistant TB in areas of high prevalence and how um, that could potentially help save lives and potential costs. That would be hugely beneficial. You know, I think it's, it's a low cost project. You know, the software is available. Everything is, you know, it's a, very, it's a matter of training. So I think in general, that would be very, very beneficial for, for health facilities or for, for organizations if they kind of would be able to track where, where these, um, yeah, where high, what the prevalence of uh, antibiotic resistance is, yeah. So I think it's a very low cost project that would be able to implement. It's, it's accessible. These people had. You know, these were not highly skilled. You know, they were they had smartphones, they were in the training and off they went and they enjoy the experience. So I think it can be done, it's very adaptable to any environment. Thank you. Uh, gentleman in the check shirt. Yes, excellent presentation. I wonder you didn't present it, but did you use the track feature to trace out trails and roads to the villages so that that might serve a provision of care later on? Yeah, that was also carried out. So yeah, they were able to track the trail. The way the team operated, that they would select a region where they would, where they would uh, investigate, and they would kind of branch out. So we kind of had an idea of the trails that they took, and in general, the the roading because there's some mining that goes on in Sierra Leone, so some of the roads are quite well mapped. But it's kind of added to that what was available. Great. One last question from the gentleman in the middle. Uh, thanks, Laura. Great presentation. Um, so you said it's a pilot and, and uh, you learnt a lot from it. I'm wondering what you would think would be the next step. If you could add one thing to this system to improve it next time, what would you do? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, every, every project has its limitations, but I think um, for this experiment, we use a low number of workers and I think for the future, maybe uh, you can gather so much more information. So we gathered healthcare access, it can be used to for yeah, try, to try and uh, gather as much more information as possible about like um, socioeconomic status and also for adv advocacy uh, as showed by Sylvie that was done in free time which is very useful, especially if you want to try and follow up on cases that are in quarantine like that that type of information that could be being collected also you know just in terms of to try and identify if villages what the socioeconomic status was if they were more at risk of being of poverty and lack of food and all these type of things would have been very useful. Yeah. Great. Um, thank you very much, Laura. Would you like to join oh, yeah. me here? And I'd invite the other two speakers back up onto the, um, onto the panel here. We have 15 to 20 minutes now of open discussion.